The high compression fitting on a Ford 2000, 3000, or 4000 three-cylinder gas or diesel tractor can sometimes be problematic. But in this video, I'm gonna show you the exact way that you need to install it. And when you install it in this proper order, you won't have any problems with that fitting leaking at all. So let me walk you through that process. First, you do have an O-ring on the suction line and you can just pull that one out so that you can put a new O-ring back in. Here's the old one and the new one, you will feel a little groove that rests in here and you can just slide that new O-ring into the groove with your finger and just make sure that it drops down there and it's secure, you can run your finger all the way around there. Now we'll go to the high compression side. So there's this nylon washer that's down here in the bottom. Make sure that you remove your old nylon washer. You don't wanna double those up because you get a new one in your kit. That nylon washer can just drop right down in place. And I like to set it in place while we're here on the bench rather than remembering to do that once I'm wrestling this pump onto the tractor. It's heavy, it's hard to maneuver it all in there. So have that out of the way. Then the next step, I think this is where some people get hung up, so pay attention really closely. In the kit, you get both of these washers as well as this grommet. Now the grommet, let's talk about that first, it does have a little bit of a, like a recessed uh, ledge to it, and that is where this brass piece drops down in. The grommet is not directional, it doesn't matter which side you put the brass onto, but you wanna press the brass into the grommet so that it's flush all the way around and even and smooth. Then your next step is this special steel washer. Uh, this washer is essential to the success of your pump. There are cheaper high compression fittings on the market that don't have this piece. You can buy four or five, 10 of them, and all of them won't seal with that, without this washer. So make sure when you purchase one that you get one that has this steel washer to it. It's critical to the pump sealing on this fitting. The high compression set that we sell does have this silver steel washer in it and you wanna make sure yours does too. This washer is directional, so make sure you put it in the right direction. Notice how I have it in my hand. I'm gonna flip it over just so you can really see both sides of it. This drops into the nut just in that direction. So the part that comes up towards the center is up. Like if I can over exaggerate the direction of it, you're gonna drop it in in this direction. Then when you have that in there, once you put it on the tractor, this rubber grommet with the brass piece, this brass washer is gonna go right up against that silver washer and set down like that, but we'll press that in. It'll pull together once we're onto the pipe, so I'll wait to do that. On the bench, you need to get the brass, the washer in the right direction, and your nylon in here, your O-ring, then you'll be ready. I'm gonna take a minute and clean off the remains of my old gasket. I'll use some gasket sealer, install my new gasket, and then we'll be ready to wrestle this onto the tractor. This is my dad, Dan. He's helping me here to put the pump together. What we're doing is we're trying to get the suction line and the high compression line to about the right spot for where they're gonna go while also lining up the bolts. So we had two bolts in the pump ready to go. We're also using a punch as a guide. And those bolts, one, they help hold in the gasket, but secondly, then they're just ready. This is a heavy pump and you're holding it up here, trying to get the lines matched up and everything. So, <laughs> um, you're just, it's, it's a hard job. And if you have two hands and you've got the bolts ready to go, then you're ready to put them in. I've got the long one. This is the one. So there's two long bolts that go in the top and the bottom and then the short bolts go over here where it's shorter. Right, it doesn't, that grab, doesn't feel like it's grabbing on. Keep like, the wrench on it. it did. Okay. All right, recap what we did here. We got the suction line in, that was the hard part. We got the high compression line in. So I was trying to wiggle them up there at the same time as Rachel was trying to get the punch in there. And now we've got all four bolts in tight to hold this down so it'll hold it there for us. We wanted to make sure we had this pipe in far enough. Um, so Rachel's got a pry bar and a block of wood. If you can't get the wood in there, then that really helps because you're prying on a gas tank so you really don't want to pry real hard so i'm just putting a little pressure on that pipe to make sure that it's in far enough and you can see the suction line is back to where the original paint job was so that makes me comfortable that it's in far enough this high compression line boy that's the one rachel we got to get in farther um, this one here is same thing we put a block of wood in there because of the fact that we messed around and got it in place it makes it a lot easier so we've got this in here 
Yeah, it's in really good. So also notice before we started, we had the compression fitting, or the nut itself, I guess I should call it, that steel washer, the brass washer, and the rubber grommet already on the pipe, ready to go. We found that if you have about maybe three quarters of an inch of pipe sticking out past that fitting, that it'll slide on a lot easier. So push that up. You don't want to push it past that bend in the pipe because then you'll have a hard time getting it back. But um, just a little bit of the pipe sticking out seems to really help. And now it's starting real easy that it's in line and I've just about got it all the way in, just going slowly with the wrench. It's just about flush and, it, and I should be there in just a second. This is the part that's really crucial is this uh, bell washer, that steel washer now is biting into the pipe and crushing. It's really going hard now, so it's really doing its job. It's crushing down tight which is what we want to get this a perfect seal. Sure. Once you have that tight, then you need to prime the pump before you're ready to start. We're using your hydraulics again. In our hydraulic pump video, where we go through this entire pump step-by-step, step, at the end, we show how to prime the pump, but it's done with that plug towards the bottom. Let me point to this plug. There's the Allen head on the end of it. You pull that out until the hydraulic oil is coming out. Hurry up and put the plug back in and then your pump should be primed and ready. Unfortunately, not like the 600 where the plug's on I know, top. Right? They put it on the bottom so it does <laughs> make of, it a lot more messy. It's a, it's a kind of a poor design to mm -hmm. have that plug on the bottom, but it's okay. You can do it. Watch that video if you need help priming the pump. Once you have it primed, you're ready to start it up. that the pump is staying dry, it's not leaking, and it's able to lift a really heavy load. This is a heavy mower, and it lifts it with ease. We don't have any leakage in the pump. That's how it should be. I hope that this video gives you confidence to repair your own high compression fitting, and that when you're finished, it operates like mine does. No leaks and lifts and holds strong. If this video is helpful to you, we also have videos on how to repair the top lid and how to rebuild the hydraulic pump as well as the carburetor or injectors on this tractor. So you can look for those in our channel. You can also hit the subscribe button as that will give you a notification every time a new video is released. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.